What's the one disease that a neurosurgeon never wants to have to biopsy? It carries the risk of killing someone that comes in contact with infected brain tissue. Many of you guys guessed it, it's the human variant of mad cow disease. Let's talk about prion disease or spongiform encephalopathy. I presented the case of a 50 year old man who presented with rapidly progressive dementia, ataxic gait, as well as myoclonus. Myo what? It's a quick jerking movement of your body that you can't control. Kind of like a hiccup or when you wake up from sleep and you feel your body jerk all of a sudden. That's kind of what myoclonus is. Luckily, these conditions are extremely rare with about three to 500 cases being diagnosed a year in the United States. What in the world is a prion? Is it a bacteria? Is it a virus? It's a kind of protein actually, and it's most abundantly found in nerve cells. If that protein happens to fold up weird, like in this picture, it can actually clog up the normal function of the brain. By far the most common prion disease in humans is called creutzfeldt jakob disease. If a diseased prion comes in contact with a normal prion in the brain, it will cause spongiform characteristics within the brain that causes brain shrinkage. Those clumps of abnormal proteins build up in your brain and then your brain just cannot function well. And it's essentially like having a bunch of holes in your brain. It rapidly alters your personality, your memory, and your ability to move. The most common form of CJD is actually inherited. Acquired CJD is something that you can get through a medical procedure. There have been reported cases from cornea transplants, as well as patient to patient transmission through neurosurgical procedures from infected equipment. If a brain biopsy is ever performed on a patient with suspected CJD, we have to quarantine those surgical instruments. If that procedure is positive for CJD, we actually have to destroy the surgical equipment because even an autoclave or standard sterilization procedures can't get rid of the prion. You remember that scene from Silence of the Lambs? You heard it here first. It's not a good idea to eat brains. We've talked about it being hereditary and we've talked about how you can acquire prion disease, but actually 85% of cases of CJD are sporadic or we have no idea where they came from. So how do we diagnose this really rare disease? Over the years, we've gotten really good at it. We used to biopsy it or perform EEG back in the 70s and 80s. And on the board standard answer is detecting the 1433 protein in the cerebrospinal fluid. We know the findings to look for on MRI, as well as special assays that we can run on the CSF and the blood. Modern medicine has come so far that we can usually make this diagnosis without needing to biopsy the brain. However, in my career, I have seen three cases of suspected CJD that ended up undergoing biopsy. The conclusion for these diseases is that they are extremely rare, but universally fatal. The case I presented earlier was not my patient because I have never seen a case of CJD, but he did progress to death within just a few months. The moral of the story is that they're extremely rare, but universally fatal because we have no treatments. Most cases are sporadic or hereditary, but the one thing that you don't want to do is be like this guy to get the acquired form. Friends, don't let friends eat brains. Stay tuned next week and I'll go through another case.